Hi there everybody. So today we are working on uh, sound production and some exercises to try to make your sound a little bit better, a little bit more consistent and uh, to apply it to Neil Gauss' lament for the death of his second wife in the key of D. So yeah, so that's what we're going to work on. We're going to work on dynamics and we're going to work on vibrato and also phrasing with the with the Neil Gauss and we're just going to use the first phrase as an example and that's it just this here <laughs> just that much just to see if we can get it to come out the sound to kind of be as best as it can be as full as it can be and and put some dynamics in there too a little bit of loud and soft so first of all I think that we should kind of get warmed up uh, with the bow because you know this the getting a good sound on the fiddle involves bow control this is what we'll be practicing today so I think we should warm up getting the bow moving so we'll just play, say, maybe a D major scale, since we're in the key of D for Neil Gauss, and uh, just get the fiddle working right. So let's do that. So I'm going to do a D major scale, and we'll do it a few times like usual. I got my tuner on here so you can trust me. Okay, here we go. Starting on D, going all the way up to high A, and going all the way down to low A. Ready? Go. scale and arpeggio and hopefully that went okay uh, but we'll certainly we'll give it another try just to make sure it gets all locked in and then we'll try it a little quicker and uh, and then we'll go from there let's do it again D major ready go gives you more volume right away on the fiddle. And that is our volume control on the fiddle, is how much bow, how fast we're using the bow, or sorry, we're moving the bow. So, and that's basically how much bow you're using according to how much time there is. And uh, so the more you use, the quicker your bow, the more volume, and the slower the bow, bow the less volume. And that's how we do dynamics. So anyway, you'll notice. So let's do it a little quicker. <laughs> 
just see where it lands. We'll do this twice as well. So this time around, just see where they land, okay? Next time around, you can try to fix them if you want, okay? One, two, three, go. <laughs>
again, you know, you, you, when you're on two strings like that, you really have to try to uh, uh, mitigate the, the weight on the two strings so that you get a good sound on both. And it helps you when you're on the single string. It helps you to learn that touch that you need. Now, that being said, let's start from the very beginning with this. Okay, we're going to do these little circles in front of our nose to make very, very small uh, little notes like this. See that? And, and, and that's what we're going to do to, to get the sound started. And we'll do it on each note of the scale. We're going to go like this. on each note of the scale. Four touches. If you're having problems with it, you can work on your bow push-ups. To try to get that momentary sound. See that? So you lower it gently. We're using your fingers. Again, remember bow push-ups. It's this here, and this is where we apply it. So you're moving your fingers gently. You put her down there. Make a little tiny sound with your fingers. See that? And little momentary sounds. Which is for a fiddle player, that's the most important thing. Because that's all we're ever doing is belting out these little momentary sounds. And you want to get them nice and strong, even though they're short. So what's gonna ha what it's gonna sound like is this. Whoops. percentage of them is going to work for you at that this point so you you know there's going to be a lot of them it's a, it's a two octave scale with four touches on each note so you're going to end up doing a lot of touches and uh, so let's see if and, and, and like I said not all of them are going to work but you're just going to try to get most of them working let's give it a, a try a one two three go either because you know you're repeating it like that you get a percentage and hopefully it's a high percentage and that's all you're trying to do here now and hopefully they had a sound like this instead of this that's too weak see that's good not getting enough person purchase on the string to get the note started so let's give it another try with that in mind and you can try this all over the bow
feels different everywhere you do it on the bow. It's challenging at the tip because you're adding, whoops, you're adding weight as you're dropping the bow. You're trying to add weight because the tip is so light. Whereas here, just dropping the bow is going to give you enough weight. See that every time. So it's a little harder at the top of the bow, but very, very useful to get. So let's give it one more try. D major, four little bumps per note. One, two, three, go. success. Hopefully it's going okay for you guys too. So that's a little bit of information for your hand on how you get your notes started. And you, you, I'm sure you notice things as you felt that, as you, as you drop that bow, trying to make a decent sound to get that note started, okay? And that's what that's kind of for, and it's also for practicing your percussive momentary notes. Now let's see if we can use this, this practice we just did to make some decent notes. So check this out. Here's what we're going to do. You're gonna, I'm going to do it and then you're going to do it. So we're going to do down and then up on each string. Trying to be totally perfect. No weird things or, or noises or squawks or touching other strings or bouncing or none of that stuff if you can. Okay. Trying to make it absolutely perfect. And then if it end, eventually comes out perfect, we're going to speed up the bow uh, so that you can eventually, by the time we finish working on this, you'll be whipping that bow back and forth and still making a good sound. And not only that, it'll give you lots of good volume that you can use when you need it. One thing about volume is that knowing how to give yourself lots of volume is really good because playing softly is not near as hard as playing with a lot of volume. Playing softly, you just slow down your bow. But when you need to belt it out, then, then you're pretty well whipping that bow back and forth and you still want it to sound good. See that? So that's why that's important. So this is what it's going to look like. start your down bow clean. You get to the end, you stop. You start your up bow, you get a little nudge of weight. It's because that's the empty end of the bow. So a little nudge of weight and then you move. Follow through. Stop at the frog. And when you stop, you let those shock absorbers absorb the shock. See that? Stop. Start your down. Stop. Start your up. Stop. Start your down. See that? And that's how we do it to make the cleanest sound right out of the gate. Okay, let's give it a go. I'm going to do it and then you're going to do it right after. There's no point in doing it with me because you have to listen to your own sound. But I'll do it first so you have an example.
perfect game there. My bow slid a tiny bit on the G-string. And I got to admit that these strings are in just horrible shape. I was rehearsing with the Celtic Orchestra last night and I could not get my D string in tune it, and it's sounding right. It was really weird. It had this weird twangy sound and, and it wouldn't be in tune. It kept varying the intonation wildly when I bowed it. I was trying to tune it. And, uh, and then I looked down close at the string uh, and, and it was at the uh, where I where I play it and I looked close and here it had unraveled the D string had unraveled here where the bow goes which I have never run into before whenever my string is unraveled it's always been where my fingers go because that's where your you know your fingernails dig into them a little bit or lots of things happen and that's where they go but never down here and it's really it was actually a relief because it means that there's nothing wrong with my fiddle or my ear because <laughs> the buzz that I've been perceiving for the last couple of weeks was probably caused by that unravel up at the and you never I never thought to look up here for an unravel so anyway so there you go but I need new strings bad and a dressing of the fingerboard and several other things okay so now we're gonna try this again you're going to, I'm going to do it, and then you're going to do it. okay uh, and uh, and hopefully you're starting to notice the difference you can get out of the sound when you speed up your bow now if you had a good result with that and not relatively no problems or weird you know uh, squeaks or whistles or crunches or anything like that then let's go a little bit faster here's what contributes to squeaking five leading causes of squeaking number one playing too close to the bridge okay that's the squeak city right there very susceptible to squeaking because you can't get it vibrating. Very easy, like on here. See that? So, staying away from that bridge. Number two, angle of bow. If your bow is at an angle to the strings and not a right angle, you risk a squeak because the bow can't properly purchase the string and roll it over and do its thing. Angle of bow. For me, it tends to be this way. And so when I go over to the E string, for instance, I splay my fingers out a little bit so I can be right angle to it. Otherwise, it wants to be like this. Okay, and you guys probably have a tendency to. And it usually shows up when you want to move to the E string. That's when you notice whatever tendency it is you have with the angle of the bow. Okay, now let's try this. We're, oh yeah, I was going to say, it's crunching too much weight. Uh, scraping, not enough weight, okay? And the weight is always combined with motion. This is weight against the bow as you draw it, and it's combined with motion, moving that bow, okay? Failure to move the bow. See that? That's what that sounds like. So if you're having that kind of problem, that's what's going on. Failure to move the bow. Very common problem. Okay? So that's that. So let's give it another try now that you have, you know what you're looking for in terms of possible problems. Here we go. Down bow. Ready? Oh no, we're gonna, I'm gonna do it and then you're gonna do it. I'm gonna go a little bit faster. Oh. Good and 
straw. Hopefully yours was too. And did you hear how much more volume there was there compared to this? See that difference there? It's a, and I could feel it on my chest, and up here on my collarbone. I could feel it. the second time the violin came alive, vibrating like crazy on those notes, okay? So that's how you get more volume. Let's go a little even quicker. I'll do it first. inserting some dynamics into these notes okay so dynamics playing loudly and softly and you can do it on each note if you want you can make each note an event in a, in a slow air I like to make the longest ones an event so here's how we're going to change the dynamic of the note as we play it note of the scale we're going to speed the bow up and feather it off and then the next note same thing you'll find it feels different in the up bow and the down bow let's give it a try okay ready two three go
tip there too. Okay, so that's how you create more volume. And that's how you taper it off after you're done. So now, let's combine that. Let's talk about vibrato. Okay, vibrato is where you put a wiggle on the note. It sounds like this. See that? Nice, uh, nice thing to do especially in a slow air, to dress it up and to make it sound a little fancier, is to add some vibrato. Now with vibrato, it's kind of a contentious story, but uh, uh, it's something that fiddle players don't use a whole lot of. We use a little tiny bit at the end of a long note here and there, and that's about all. Whereas violinists use it all the time on everything they play, has vibrato, even eighth notes in a reel have vibrato on them, you know? And so we use it very sparingly, uh, playing Scottish and Irish music on the fiddle, but we do use it. And let's talk about Neil Gazelman. So one place that it would be really good to do it on theirs is right in the middle of the first phrase. <laughs> It's lovely and beautiful and that's that's how you would do it there that's how you would do the vibrato is, is to roll your finger back of the note see that as you swell it and that's what my brother used to say swelling into the vibrato okay so we just add just the smallest wiggle at the end of the long dramatic note exactly kind of how we do it and Cape Breton and Irish people do it that way and Scottish people do it that way it's a really nice way to do it it puts a little bit of pressure on because some people could be accused of using vibrato to uh, to uh, sort of cover up their bad intonation <laughs> and uh, so you know some people use it in, in that way and they can't stop they, they don't feel comfortable about their intonation, so they put a wiggle on everything all the time. And it's kind of an insecurity, but it is, it does happen quite a lot. So you, of course you want to avoid that, you know. If you're playing in tune, then you don't need anything at all. I just, as my mom used to say about her stew, when somebody would try to grab the ketchup, she'd say, my stew say it stands on its own two feet. Uh, and if you're in tune, you really need nothing at all. Watch this. See that? Lovely, beautiful, in tune, and just nice. But we will put a little wiggle here and there. So now, let's practice doing that with the scale, okay? Uh, I'll give you a little tutorial about vibrato first, and we'll try it for a little while before we do it on the scale. So here's how you do vibrato. You got your first finger, we'll, we'll take the first finger on the A string, the B. Now here, here's an in tune B. So when I do vibrato, I, I, I sort of roll my finger away from the note, so flat of the note, and then back up in tune again. And then flat, and then in tune. And then flat, then in tune. So it's going to sound kind of like this. See that? Keep trying it. into the note, flat of the note, into the note. It's really good to do it in a timed way, like I just did it there. 
kind of like that. It helps people seem to get it started, get the vibrato started when they're trying to play a note is to do it in time like that. So here's what I suggest. First of all, spend the next few minutes there mucking around and trying to make it happen. Okay, I'm going to do that, uh, the exercise I just did, I'm going to do that a few times while you guys are trying to figure it out. So again, B on the A string. And to speed it up like that, to add more warbles as you go along, is, a, is how you kind of make it into eventually your vibrato. Okay, now hopefully you were able to mess around with that a little bit and get some rhythmic wobbling happening with your finger. And uh, so now we are going to try it on the scale. Okay, it's going to sound like this. Keep trying. If you miss one, you can't get them all in. Or move on to the next one. Okay. And then when we're coming back down, you'll have another crack at whatever, whatever, whatever note you're having trouble vibrating or anything like that. And if I'm gonna turn like this so you can see my hand. Let's give it a go. So, ready, go. <laughs> successful and hopefully you're doing it in that timed way for per I think it's the best way to do it and I think we should just straight up just try it again okay right away still going okay and now the next thing we'll do is we'll speed it up a little bit we'll do it like this we'll try to do six per see that 
that's just one more, or sorry, two more wearables. And uh, then eventually it'll get nice and quick and, and like vibrato should be. So let's give it a try like that. Ready to go. <laughs> So that, and then you can mess with it. She can just kind of try to make it work because everybody's vibrato is so personal. Each each player is going to have a different sound to their vibrato. And it's all yours. So mess around with it. See what works. What you like to do. The two things I will stress about it that has to happen when you're practicing vibrato is that you have got to go always flat of the note and into the note. Going sharp if it sounds weird, throws you off, is totally weird. So don't do that. Just go flat of the note and then bring it in. Flat of the note and then bring it in over and over. So that's the first thing I'm going to stress. If you, if you don't do it like that, then you're not doing it right. Uh, and the second thing I'm going to stress is that uh, you move your bow a little quicker as you do it. it. No, sorry, in time. As much as you can. Because that really, really helps as well. Okay, so now we're sticking it on to this tune. simple now. I'm going to show you what I did. Little vibrato and a swell. Swell. And then swell as we move up. Sorry. You see how that happened there? Swell and vibrato. See how that works? That's what we're going to try. So first of all, let's see if we can work on the swell. Okay, we're going to try it just like that. We're going to do it five or six times. And you can count how many... Uh, so how many was that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven or eight. See that? Let's see if we can do that, okay? We'll do it five or six times. Just that, see that? Now let's do that low A. Let's do the swell without the vibrato. See that? 
okay, that's starting to turn into something. Let's try that again. Same exact thing. Ready? No vibrato, just the swells. Ready? Go. <laughs> discussion and debate about what's more beautiful the up bow or the down bow and I can just I can hear Allie Bain talking to my dad in, in Baltimore Ireland at the end of a very long night of tunes and shouting at him the down bow is where the beauty is Lloyd the down bow is where the beauty is and it is true the, the, the down bow is our strongest note it is the the most sort of accessible way to make a good sound and so for most people it is the more consistently beautiful note but the up bow can be gorgeous too and I remember the the, the what I saw was this violinist from uh, uh, Romania or something like that famous violinist and he was supposed to have the best up bow in the world and I watched these videos in the string techniques class and certainly they were absolutely gorgeous up bows, like the sound, the swell of them. The thing is about the up bow, in some ways it's easier to make a good sound. On the down bow, you have to place the weight and you gotta do it at the right time or you're gonna get a bounce. And as you move the bow along, you gotta adjust that weight to be into the strings the whole time. On the up bow, the, the physical setup of it kinda does the job, see that? The weight is kind of coming from the shape, the triangle shape between my hand and the bow. And as I move it, it kind of puts on its own weight. The hardest thing now would be to move it straight. But once I get the hang of moving the bow straight, very easy to, to get a nice sound out of it. But it doesn't have the strength of the down. So it's, it's a people, people debate about it quite a lot. Uh, but anyway, and you'll find there's a difference as well. Okay, now let's go back to this. Now we're going to try doing that same opening phrase with the swell. And we're going to try putting a little wiggle on it as well. Okay. <laughs> Go back, play it, 
Try to mimic it. Go back, play it, try to mimic it. Remember, the faster you move your bow, the more weight you need. And on the up bow, the straightness is key. Okay, good luck. Let me know if you have any questions working on any of this stuff, and I'd be more than happy to help. And we'll see you guys in a little while. Thank you.